when we think about the redization trend, which is which really started in 2010, but we're seeing a lot more of it in, in recent months, is there are really two ways that the REITs have come into formation. One is by simply a, a C Corp converting to REIT status, and the second way is for a C Corp to spin out its real estate into a separately traded REIT. So first on the conversion front, the main benefit is almost complete elimination of corporate taxes and the replacement of, of corporate taxes with dividends to shareholders. And what we've typically seen is that because dividends are, are valued more dearly in this market given the low interest rate environment, is that there's typically a price, an equity price pop when companies announce reconversions. The, the flip side or, or the negative to a reconversion is that because a company now needs to pay out the majority of its cash flow in the form of dividends, it needs to access the capital markets much more frequently. So, uh, and some of these companies are in uh, less traditional REIT asset classes such as prisons, billboards, telecommunications, copper and fiber. Those are asset classes that the traditional REIT investor is less familiar with, such that there may be some concerns uh, regarding the ability for those companies to access capital when they need it. The, the second way we've seen REITs come into existence is, is again, via the, the REIT spinoff or the Opco Propco. Uh, again, the primary benefit is reduction in corporate taxes from the Opco standpoint. Uh, one of the other benefits is that now the company is able to extract or, or derive value from its real estate by creating a, a separate real estate company. And we've seen a bit of alchemy whereby one plus one equals three, whereby the, op the valuation of the operating company plus the valuation of the REIT given where REIT valuations are very high these days, that one plus one can equal three, and the overall enterprise is valued much more highly. One of the, a few of the cons or the negatives to an OPCO PropCo is that on day one, uh, because the OPCO has now leased all of its, virtually all of its income producing assets to a REIT, it now has entered into a long-term obligation, which while it may have a maturity of 10 or 15 years, it's effectively a perpetual obligation because if the company wants to remain in business, it needs to renew those leases. One of the other negatives is from the REIT's standpoint is that the REIT on day one has just one tenant. So there are some concerns around, or there could be some concerns around tenant diversification. However, uh, many REITs that we see in the last couple months, in the last few years, have gone on diversification strategies whereby they're getting, you know, they're enabling themselves to eliminate or reduce their reliance on one tenant. And so, uh, again, while we've seen this trend since 2010, we think it's a trend that it's definitely picked up steam in the last year or so. We expect the trend to continue given the, the level of activist investors pushing for reconsideration or reconversions. So we'll be watching this trend very closely. Mm -hmm.